is Annie Meet Sumner, and I am the director of Madeline Island School of the Arts, joining you today with my colleagues Maddie Rupp and Christy Wandry. They are here in case I have any technical difficulties. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us online with the fabulous Kate Fassett and Brandon Mabley today. They are the reason we're all here, and Misa could not be more grateful to be working with them. I'm going to give a quick quick introduction. If you're obviously you know who Kate and Brandon are, if you're on this work, if you're on this webinar, but just to give a back introduction of them and our school, we're going to do a fun interview. We may or may not have given them some questions that we're going to ask them, so we'll find out their fabulous answers. Um, and also, feel free. Um, this is your opportunity to drop in any kind of question or answer um, in our Q and A section. Um, and hopefully we'll have time to answer those at the end of the presentation. So here we go. For those of you who do not know these lovely gentlemen in front of us today, Kate Fassett, he's an American-born artist celebrated for his vibrant work in various med mediums, including knitting, needlepoint, and quilting. Um, originally from San Francisco, California, Kate developed an early passion for color and design. Um, in the 60s and 70s, he gained a lot of prominence, becoming a leading figure in the textile arts. Um, I remember seeing magazines, him in magazines. My mother would collect magazines and fawn over this gorgeous man. Um, and, and to be able to see him years later, it's, it's just an honor for me. Um, his bold use of color and pattern has influenced a wide range of decorative arts, um, he's also off, also offered um, numerous books, including Glorious Knits, Kay Facet Quilts, and the Cotswolds, and many more. Um, Kay has exhibited his work worldwide and continues to inspire people as well as artists with his innovative approach to textiles. How does that sound, Kay? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, Brandon, you ready for your turn? Hey, Brandon, man. oh boy, here we go. Brandon is a well-renowned textile designer also and a teacher known for his dynamic use of color and bold patterns. I love his checks and his um, fish lips specifically. Originating um, from the UK, Brandon began his career under the mentorship of and friendship of CAFE. Um, with whom he continues to collaborate with extensively. Um, his work spans knitting, needlepoint, and fabric design. A lot of times you'll find Kate and Brandon on when, they are, when they're experiencing some kind of downtime, needlepointing together, and it is truly so wonderful to be able to see them do this. Um, he is also an author and has written several books, including Brilliant Knicks and Knitting Color. Um, Brandon and CAFE conduct workshops around the world, inspiring crafters with his humor and enthusiasm. Um, his creativity and innovative approach is just an added bonus to the textile arts. Um, so there we go. How did that sound, Brandon? Pretty, pretty on par? I put a bomb on us. Oh, that's so, I'll have to repeat myself. One second, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so going on, I just, if you would humor me for another moment, everyone on this webinar, um, I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you a little bit about the history of Madeline Island School of the Arts, MISA, which is um, who we are and our current workshops. Um, so I'm gonna start a slideshow for you and let me know, um, can everyone see this slideshow? Um, just want to make sure I can see it. Um, so what we have in front of us is um, a map of Madeline Island School of the Arts, our flagship campus. We started on Madeline Island. It's the largest and only inhabited of the 22 Apostle Islands. The school has been in operation for 12 years, and it's considered one of the top rank art schools in the country. This privately owned 40 acre campus is an hour and a half from Duluth Airport, and then a quick ferry boat ride on beautiful Lake Superior. Once students arrive, island time begins. Um, some of the highlights of this location include our fabulous accommodations and our north-facing spacious studios, um, sprawling meadows, and of course, Lake Superior hikes, sandy beaches, and lovely lagoons, which you just saw. 
um, inspired by this magical island, we wanted to extend our workshop season and provide more diverse settings. So Mesa has three other locations to choose from and a fourth in the works. We spend our spring in downtown Santa Fe, a, flu a few blocks from the historic plaza. And this location features endless amazing restaurants, the Pink Adobe being one of them that we tried for dinner many nights this past spring. Trips to local museums, including the Folk Art Museum, which is hands down one of Cape's most favorite museums he's visited, and George O'Keefe Museum. Also, there are trips to Ghost Ranch um, and other various places. In the fall, we offer workshops in beautiful Bar Harbor, Maine. This location features oceanfront accommodations and well-lit workshop spaces. Uh, it's also cr crisp air, vibrant foliage, and lots and lots of fresh seafood. Mesa is announced, is excited to announce, sorry, we'll be adding our fifth location in the late fall of 2025 on the Monterey Peninsula at a Silomar Conference Center you see here. This location offers a beautiful refuge by the Pacific Ocean, uh, beautiful walkways along the beach, and breathtaking sunsets. And last but not least, what we're here to talk about and what we're excited, most excited for coming up is the winters that we get to spend at the luxurious Dude Ranch outside of Tucson, Arizona, the Tonka Verde Guest Ranch. This location features 180 horses, famous cowboy cookout, and sweeping views of the Rincon Mountains. We hope uh, you will consider taking one of our workshops for the full Misa, Kaif, and Brandon experience. Um, so thank you for your time and watching these uh, and seeing this slideshow. We'll talk more about this location um, with Kaif and Brandon and their experience that they had with us this past winter and hope that you will join us this coming winter when Kaif and Brandon will be there at the ranch again. Um, all right, here's the fun part. We have a set of questions for these for these fellows, and um, we may or may not have shared them. Um, and I'm so looking, we may or may not have shared the questions with them before this, but I'm so looking forward to their responses. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the time that we spend with them. Um, afterwards, uh, if you have some questions and answers, please go ahead and pop them in there. And without further ado, welcome Kaif and Brandon. All right, let's get started. The first question, this is a question for the two of you. Okay, my question is, how do you each balance your unique artistic styles when working together on a project? It's a fine balance. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> difficult to explain something that is so organic and spontaneous. But um, I would say that that each of us uh, has um, is a real fan of each other's work, and so when when we're working on something and we get kind of lost or we think, oh, I'm not sure this is any good. The other one will say, what are you talking about? It's brilliant. Keep going. And we're, we're very much um, uh, whipping each other on to stay on track. Uh, and, and when we fall off the horse, we always get back on because we encourage each other. I think I think that's the main um, excitement we have. But it's also we're, we're looking at the color and the pattern and thinking an overview of how that design works with the whole collection or as it relates to past collections and ones coming up, so forth. That's enough out of me. It, it's very exciting to see uh, somebody else um, give birth to an idea and let that idea un, um, evolve as they conceive that idea. And then um, if we feel that it needs to inject in, a, in an opinion, then um, I can't hold back and 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 do so. And I, I'm I respect very much that Cave listens and enjoys collaboration and feedback. And 
it really, and you know, it's pull and push. And also, I like it then. When kids don't know that's the way I like it or I want it or, you know, um, I'll take on board what you're saying. So, you know, it's it, it's a very healthy process. We try to incorporate this in our teaching. So when we're giving a workshop, it's not we're not there to tell our students, do this, do that, don't do this. We're there to help them find their own voice and then give them a little bit of nudging this direction, that direction. And we've built a reputation for people knowing that when they come to our classes, they're going to get two very separate and different opinions. Cave will say some one thing, I'll say another thing, but it forces them to make the, make up their own decision at the end of the day. And that's so when they feel when they leave our workshop, they feel empowered about their own choice, hopefully. Yeah. I've seen that. I've seen that happen multiple times, uh, Brandon and Cave. It's incredible. Um, I think uh, students uh, have shown up to your workshops not knowing what to expect and um, they leave with just so much excitement um, and and knowledge of, of where to go which I find I, I find really really inspiring and wonderful and you guys do a wonderful job of taking the students and, and, through that and, journey. Well, you know I just was remembering I, I was just in Birmingham um, you know talking to a lot of people about workshops and things and one woman said, I'm coming to your workshop. I'm very, very nervous. How do I prepare? And I said, you don't prepare. I said, you just arrive and mm -hmm. I will help you shop and the whole thing. And she said, that's the best news I've heard. It. And she was so happy. And that's exactly the way I like it. When people come really open to any experience. Mm -hmm. I've heard you say that over and over again, Kaif, and then that's the that's the beauty of their experience spending a five day workshop with you. Um, and I I I I I've seen it firsthand, and it's beautiful, Kaif. I'm going to ask you just I know Brandon probably showered this morning, but would you scoot a little closer to him so that we can see you both? Oh, that's so adorable. There you go. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. I have one other question for you. I know you guys are um, always storytelling and things like that. And if you could collaborate on a inspiring piece with a historical figure from art or design um, who in this world, whether they're dead or alive, who would it be and why? Well, I thought about this and I thought the person that I would like that it was very inspiring to me when I was a young aspiring artist uh, was Diaghilev, who is the great uh, empresario of the ballet in Europe. And he uh, encouraged uh, um, Nijinsky to become the greatest ballet dancer of all time. And, and, uh, and also uh, produced the most wonderful ballets with fabulous sets and costumes and music. Uh, you know, he inspired Stravinsky to design for him and so forth. So I love dance and I love the theater and I would love to have been one of those designers and also maybe a choreographer, maybe step onto the stage and tell the dancers what to do. So that's who I would like to be working with. Okay, thank you. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty. We're back at this. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate that. Um, Brandon, how about you? Um, do you know, I hadn't read the question and I, what comes to my mind is um, I'd like to take any art student and collaborate with them and impart into them what I have to offer and take that all energy that they have and just go to the highest level that we could possibly possibly do. And I think that would be so empowering. I mean, I learn so much from our workshops um, and it's we're not there to take somebody and turn them into who we are. We're there to get them to open up their box and step out of it and do a dance from the rooftops. <clears throat> um, there's nothing more empowering so yeah, I'd, I'd, I don't want, I, I would like to collaborate with somebody who isn't too 
power headed and too egotistical and too um they, they they are open to collaboration and there's nothing there's nothing more rewarding than collaborating with this guy. I would say I like to collaborate with somebody like Kate, but that wouldn't be fair. I get to <laughs> All right, we're going to move on. Kate, I have a question I've been dying to ask you. Um, you know, I, I've seen so much of your needlepoint and your fabric and your textiles and your knits at the Peruvian collection. Um, but I want to know that your work is always known for its vibrant use of color in whatever you're creating. Um, if you had to design using only one color, which would it be and why? Well, first of all, why would you do that to me? <laughs> I'm color. This is awful. Um, I, I, you know, I was asked this in an audience once, and I said gray because I thought of all the wonderful shades of color that gray stones on the beach. I was raised on a uh -huh. beach in California, and I remember taking little pebbles and making little arrangements on the seashore with seashells and things but th those stones with all those shades of gray uh were incredibly beautiful and i can't think it's never changed i've always found the whole world of grayish tones mm. very mysterious and very uh subtle and beautiful and it's strange because i go for very bright color as you can see from the painting behind you there um but i i do find myself very um, excited by the restraint of neutral colors. It's funny you say that, Kate. I've been with you um, in Santa Fe and uh, Tucson and Madeline Island, all those locations. And what I look for so much, look forward to when I'm with you at these locations is, um, is the way you just, you know, it's, it's the different shades of green in the desert or the browns in the desert with a pop of pink or on, on Madeline, it, it is. It's like going to the beach and seeing those different shades of rocks yeah. and clay and things and like I that. When, when my, my, my uh, students occasionally will do something in very delicate pastels mm -hmm. or, or beautiful shades of gray, I'm thrilled with those. I know that it's coming from a place that's very dear to them. There's something, a lot of love goes into these very restrained, uh, interesting uh, re arrangements. Again, totally not the answer I thought I was going to get from you, but I love, love your response. And I think everyone else loves that kind of response. It's it's so you, Kate. So thank you. Um, okay, I have another question for you. Um, What's your favorite place in the world? And I think I might know the answer to this. You might have just given it away. What's your favorite person, place in the world to seek inspiration? And what about it sparks your creativity? Well, one place that, I mean, Brandon and I are both incredibly inspired by Japan. Um, oh. and because it's, uh, they're, they're very playful with pattern. And also they have an incredible elegance, but they're always making incredible atmospheres with their art and with their textiles and with their paintings and with their architecture. You know, that's a wonderful culture. Um, but I, I was very moved by Santa Fe, I must say. You know, the workshops we did there where you got us there and took us to that incredible folk art museum, which has folk art from all over the world, every culture you can think of is represented. And I mean, I'm still buzzing from it. There were so many ideas. I, I sat down immediately when I, I got home and designed a fabric from one of the things we saw in that museum. Are you serious? Wow. Totally. I mean, it's, oh, it's. I'm so looking forward to seeing that, Kate. That's, oh, that's so exciting to hear. I could say, I could tell when we were there together, your mind was blown. And it was so excited. I mean, talk about a kid in a candy store. It was unbelievable. You were screaming yeah. from the rooftops. Even when we were walking through town, you couldn't tell people fast enough how to get to the, I mean, even the students, and you practically 
told the, gave the students the day off and said, get on up there to the Folk Art Museum. You will not regret it. So yes, that was wonderful. And it's so incredible how you just, you push your students in these workshops just to get inspired um, and to seek inspiration in other places. Um, I, I feel like the pink buildings of the Tucson Ranch was so inspiring to you. The pink and the green and the blue, turquoise blue sky um, was so yeah. inspiring to you in, in Tucson. Um, okay, there we're going to move on. I have a couple questions for Brandon now. Thank you for being put on the spot, Kate. You did a wonderful job. You passed the test. Um, now it's time to put Brandon on the spot. Um, okay, Brandon. Here's one. Um, here's a great question. And I think I feel like I know. So anyway, here's the question. What's the most unexpected source of inspiration you've ever drawn from? Oh, the garden. <laughs> the garden. Yeah. Really? Yeah. My, I mean, I love I love my garden and you know, just picking random little posies and, um, you know, one of the, one of the most unexpected um, delights that we found when we were in um, boring old Phoenix, I might get slapped across the legs for saying that, was going to the botanical gardens oh, no. in Phoenix, mm -hmm. and it was absolutely mind blowing. How you had it was kind of like the painting behind you. You had all those subtle shades of greens with unexpected hits of turquoise and um then you get a, a little flower pop here and there and it was but also the beauty of cactuses i mean to know that there's this whole world of uh you know drought tolerant plants that are just sensational and the idea that a lot of people in phoenix have english lawns where they squander the water on these lawns when the actual native plants are so beautiful. Mm -hmm. but then, but that's kind of true into Tucson with, where you have the incredible squirrels, which are like fingers mm -hmm. or phallic things all pointed up. And, but the, they change with the subtlety and the light and the hues of color there that's so um, specific to that environment. And then the, the color of the earth that's kind of face powder pink and orange and terracotta and it you just I mean it is just spellbinding it really I mean I kind of feel like the place is spiritual in a, in a strange way it has a very particular energy but that is down to the light and mm -hmm. then when it rains I think it's a blessing because you can see totally different kind of color shadings in the landscape on the earth on the on the cacti wow on the wild because the ranch is actually in a national park um, so I know um, the way it's situated. It's it is it is very 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 special. Um, so yeah. yeah, so that was you know I, I we didn't know what to expect. I'd been to Tucson a couple of times before and taught, but I did we didn't know what to expect, and we were mesmerized at yeah. how how much we loved the beauty of the place, and it was unexpected. It was, a, mm. it was very subtle. Uh, it wasn't in your face, and so. You know the landscape and the, the, the again the guard uh, the gardens there um yeah so what was amazing brandon was um you know a, a lot of people don't understand so these are a five-day workshop um and and you don't you encourage your students to get out and enjoy what is around them in these locations um, and at one point on Wednesday, um, we had the afternoon off and we decided to go for a horseback ride with a, with a bunch of, um, of your students. And being on a horse up close to these great big fingers, swarrows that you mentioned was incredible. Um, and, and just being in a, that quiet moment. And these horses are just old geldings who just probably know exactly where to take you. We felt completely comfortable, um, but just, it, it was hard to take it all in at that moment. And like Kate said, just sitting out on your patio in front of your room after a rainstorm and seeing the colors just envelop um, and come out in, you know, you think of the, of, of the desert being 
sort of brown and, and not very vibrant, but you're right. It was, um, it just, it kept getting better every day. Um, and the sunsets alone were incredible. Um, yeah. the colors that the, the clouds would make were so inspiring. And again, we provide a pop-up shop for these students to shop at while they're at your workshop. And Brandon and Keith, you do a fabulous job of pushing them in the right area and showing them what they want and what things to get and what things to purchase at these pop-up shops. But I felt like a lot of these students were so inspired by their surroundings. Um, I wish yeah. I had some photos of them, but I'll put some on our Instagram um, yeah. after this and, and highlight some of the fabulous colors that they did. Okay, I have another question for you um, and, and Brandon, and this one, um, you know, you may or may not, it may be similar to this, your last question, but can you describe a moment when a mistake that you might have made or an unexpected outcome in your process led to a beautiful discovery? Oh, very much so. I mean, my painting style is, um, I, I suppose, uh, Philip Jacob, who's part of the Cave Collective, says I'm the zany guy or something. <laughs> or, I, I, you know, I'm the kind of more primitive guy, but my my style is um, straight lines make me nervous. Uh, that's that's for one. You know, it's like this this fabric here, which is uh, in, I was inspired by. I was doing some ironing, and there was all ring creases, and I thought that would make good fabric. So I pinned it out to look like a wrinkled shirt, and it became very. So my, you know, I I respond to the amount of paint that's on a brush and how that sits within the area that I'm trying to form. And then every color is affected by what goes next to it. So then what is placed next to it, it will take its own voice as I'm building the story. It's it's a struggle for me because I have a conceived idea, idea in my head and I want that to be projected down onto. But she's asking you the for design. one particular thing that you did that led to a wonderful idea. Thinking. No, I can't because I, I work are pretty good. Yeah, what about I mean, fish I, lips? I mean, uh, what, I mean how were you inspired by fish lips? What what made you what inspired fish you? Lips, to talk? Fish lips and looking at carp fish <laughs> and they're <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting over a cold. Um yeah, and it was the primitive outline, and it's not like a, a donut with a hole in the middle. There's a a primitive movement run. So I just took a, a bunch, a thick brush and a lot of paint on the brush and I just did an outline and then put a contrasting color in the middle yeah. and repeat that. I was thinking about a, a designer called Mira Mekko from wow. Finland who um, made a big hallmark and impression in the fashion industry um, at a certain period and she's now back in fashion. Um, so I was thinking about her boldness and high contrast so um yeah i mean it it's it it's it's a funny one for us when we're designing because we'll give birth to a design um now and it's, for instance what i'm painting now it won't be available in the shops for 16 months oh, later wow. yeah so it's we kind of forget what we're doing in some way because we're working that far ahead all That's the time incredible. yeah um so, and then we have to steal the time that we have available in between our travels and teacher schedule and so forth. When we're home, we get uh, designs done, put in the drawer um, for, so when Free Spirit said, okay, we're ready for a new collection where we've got it, we don't get caught out. That's something I, I, I feel like a lot of people don't know about, about you and Keith. It is, is how hard you work year round um, it, and, and how much thought and, and, and creativity and um, not inspiration, but just, uh, you know, things come to your head, just like you were saying, Keith. I mean, you just went to the Folk Art Museum and you couldn't get home fast enough to create a pattern. I mean, just the, the, in, the, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the, oh God, it's, I'm having a mind block. It'll come back to me. Someone will put it in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I did the same when I came home from Tucson because there was the 160 horses 
on the ranch. And one thing that happens in Jackson at four o'clock is the horses are let out of the pen into a field where they or they're fed, and there's just like, not a stampede, but there's just this corral of these horses and they dust run free and they run free and they are all running to their little feeding bay. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I came home and I painted out a design which may or may make it into the market, but it was inspired wow. by a designer called Esra Esha. Ann Ryder just popped it into the chat. She said spontaneity, and that is exactly what you guys have. The spontaneity when you see something, when you're ironing your shirts and the crooked lines, there's so much spontaneity. Um, where are you going, Brandon? I'm going to get the artwork. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is a these we're gonna move on to some fun and um fun and personal questions for the two of you. Um again, I would love to say what's one thing, Keith, that no one knows about you, but I think they all kind of know it now, and that's because you don't have a cell phone. Oh, <laughs> that's that's the best thing in the whole world. That's probably, that's probably the most shocking thing about me. And, and it's amazing. And you just you know, if you don't need it. I mean, it's extraordinary to be on a tube train here in England and be the only person not on the phone. Right? Yeah. It's probably pretty. I'm, I'm sure you're going to come up with some sort of fabric design with everyone putting their heads down, looking at a cell phone. I can't wait to see that one. Go ahead, Brandon. What What are you going to show us? But that was my artwork inspired by Tucson. Um, Yes. Oh, look at it. The polka dots, the lines, the checkers. Brandon, it's beautiful. I love it. Okay, I have another question. Here we go. This is a fun and personal one. This one's for each of you. You can think about it. What's a hobby or interest outside of textile art that people might be surprised to know you enjoy? I, I, I would say my strongest hobby is doing crossword puzzles uh, oh. I absolutely love and and wordle and things like that in any, any kind of puzzle I mean or jigsaw puzzles um piecing things together words or you know visions um but the other thing is cinema I love the cinema and I'll go to even bad films just to see how they're uh directed and how the sets are done and the costumes and the acting and everything it fascinates me you know how that that incredible art of the cinema i and, love it. and uh, i love pilates darling <laughs> donning a leotard and doing pilates no don't oh. think of the leotard bit but anyway. i also think the two of you enjoy a cold plunge here and there yeah. am i right Oh no, I, I'm I'm doing the cold water shower every morning. Okay. Uh, so, when we were in Tucson, wasn't it wonderful going swimming in the morning? I was gonna say that that was one of the most memorable things about Tucson for me was having that pool open at at five thirty or six o'clock in the morning. You could go for a wonderful swim. It started the day off. You introduced it to me, and I, I absolutely, it was one of the best things um, and the most looked forward thing to just getting your day started. It was the perfect temperature and seeing the stars above um, in that morning. And what was the only other thing that was up that tower morning? Those the, little wild. Hava. Yeah. Havalinas. <laughs> oh, yes. There is a family of javelinas to parade us to the swimming pool every morning. Yeah. Okay, fun. I'm just, I think I'm on gallery view. Am I on the wrong view again? Here we go. Did I go to speaker view or gallery view? Speaker view. Okay, sorry about that. A little technical difficulty again. Um, yes, the javelinas. And there was also the North Star, I think. We were looking at a satellite every morning. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the um, uh, planets. That was extraordinary. Wonderful. Yes. Okay, moving on. We've got two more questions here. Imagine you were having a dinner party with three other artists or designers, living or deceased. Who would you invite and why? I would like it to... It could also be just a friend. If you wanted to invite... I mean, I... Charlie Meach could be one of them. 
And uh, Annie Lennox is one of them. Oh, I like her. And Prince William is the other other one. Oh wow! Yeah. How about you, Cave? Gosh. Oh. Um. I well, you know, there's so many wonderful artists that I love, uh, and actors. I don't mm -hmm. know directors. Yeah. I think probably more directors would be interesting to me to know how you take a group of creative people, you know, the set designers, the costume designers, the, the sound person, the cameraman, and the actors, and you direct all of that into one fabulous experience for us in the cinema. So I think, you know, someone like John Schlesinger was, was a great friend of mine. Um, who did Midnight Cowboy. In fact, I gave him the book to do Oh, that. wow. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, someone like that, I was fascinated how, how to read his life story and how he put together productions and started very simple with little homemade, you know, family uh, films and then built up to these incredible productions. Productions. Yeah. Well, I, I think those would be two dinner parties that I'd like to be invited to if possible. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, Prince William and Annie Len Lennox, Brandon. How come Prince William and Annie Lennox? Um, he's he's um, very engaging. Um, he's not pretentious. Um, and he's also doesn't show his political sleeve. Annie Lennox does, but um, she's also quite humble. Wow. And I think she had a lot of experience that I just would like to feel her soul. Oh, yeah, that's wonderful, you guys. That is incredible. I love these insights into your into what's going on in your head and who you'd like to spend time with. My last question for the both of you, each can take your turn. What's the strangest and most unusual object in your studio? And can you give me a little story about it? Well, I, I would say probably my strangest and most memorable kind of thing is my ancestral portrait, which is this huge Chinese painting of the ancestors all lined up in rows. And what it taught me was how beautiful anything is when it's in repeat. There's something about a row of people in the same kind of clothes. I'm, I'm fascinated, you know, if I go traveling and I see a lot of boy scouts or 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 girl gymnasts or something all together in the same outfits you know in public there's something just amazing something a park is filled with people in the same clothes Changing so, the color. That, that fascinates me you know that the, the, these old ancestral portraits and also the, the colors are very subdued and interesting mm -hmm. and the repetition of it all so that fascinates me that that does not that does not surprise me one bit. I like your answer. All right, Brandon. Um, I I get such a thrill out of answering the uh, front door and finding the postman there, and he'd be absolute in delight at the mosaic that I've done all with diamonds of broken china, mm. and I've incorporated different handles from teacups. And it makes them think of their tea break, and they can relate to the the bottom of a teacup or a sauce and so forth. And they just think that's that I've taken something quite mundane as a boring front door passage, and I just drew off these diamonds and I filled them in with pools of um, diamonds of color, colored crockery. Yeah, and uh, seeing their their delight at that and that, taking a simple idea. And make it make and make that happen, and so for me that has sort of turned something on in them, and that gives me a thrill. So he made his object. He I made know. right. He, he made his unusual object. Well, actually, um, Kate, when you and Brandon, when you do that, um, uh, when you on the Wednesday when you do your lecture for um, for the public during our workshop week, we are lucky enough during that. Um, to get sort of an insider's view of what your home, your beautiful, beautiful home is, um, and, and the fabulous pieces that you fill your home with to make it as gorgeous as it is. Um, and I do remember seeing images of that, Brandon, and it is 
you know, it's a wonderful gift to the mailman or the postman. We call him the mailman here. The postman. It's a wonderful gift for him to <laughs> to show up and remember that he, what he has to look forward to, his coffee break. Um, but even just the other day when we were on a Zoom call with you, Brandon, and you had all your teapot and, and teacups in the background. And I thought, gosh, what what is that fabulous piece of artwork behind you? And you sort of looked behind you and you said, these, these are just my teacups. You know, and it's, it's, it just goes to show that you have such a fabulous um, artistic world that just surrounds you without even trying. So um, kudos and hats off to the two of you for that gorgeous, you know, wonderful thing that you provide. Um, all right. Thank you, you two, for fabulous. Oh, I, mean, I, have to say, I have to say one of the highlights of the week is when we play charades. <laughs> oh my God. So anybody that's gonna join us for the week, they have to prepare the, a list of words in advance. Yes, you're right. We do charades one evening. If you're English, it'll be charades. <laughs> charades, darling. Um, it's my personal favorite, and I'm not gonna say it, there's someone I know that takes it very seriously. I won't mention any names. Um, <laughs> definitely not. Um, but yes, that is a favorite evening activity, along with other activities that we have planned during the week. But we can't give too many hints away. But yes, charades is one of my favorite games to play with you guys. Um, and I would say you're pretty good at it, too. Well, I, I got to say, uh, there, are, there are quite a few people that say, oh, no, I didn't do that. Oh, no, that's not my, well, I'm too shy. It's not for me. And they those, love Those it. who joined it, everybody who joined uh, got really, got in really into it. It yeah. was yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah it is. I, I can't, I can't reiterate how much fun we have together with these, you know, 30 some students, the two of you, myself, um, on location. It just is um, an experience that um, I'll never forget. And I, I don't think any of your students ever forget. So um, I appreciate you guys sharing all of your, your personal information with these questions that I asked of you today. I hope they weren't too painful for you to answer. Um, and I loved, I loved hearing your insights into things, um, into these, the, your artwork and your creative spirit and everything like that. Um, I'm just going to look here to see if we have any questions um, that I haven't. Oh, here we go. Okay, here from Di Auckland, she has a question. What is your secret for staying so wonderfully young? Color. Oh. oh. Color is the fountain of youth. Let me tell you, it's so. I'm telling you, when 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 I first started painting, I painted white paintings, and so I wasn't interested in color at all. But the when the minute I got into color, my vitality lifted. You know, it's just, uh, it's a life force. So um, that's that's my secret. That's fabulous. And and and, and keeping working. And yeah. cold plunging. Yeah, and cold plunging. Oh, yeah, that's very much part of it. Yeah. All right. This is a question for both of you. What is, Kate, you sort of mentioned it earlier, um, but Brandon, what's your favorite color? You know, it's no no color ever sits alone. Mm. So, you know, every color is affected by what's around it and what's with. And, you know, I have that, uh, it's like food. I did not unexpected little. Um, so I have colors that I'm not really uh, fond of um, that, you know, look like bird poop on your sweater, you know, <laughs> uh, just jump up inappropriately. But um, no, it's so it's very hard to say a color, a color group, maybe. Um, I would lean towards green, turquoise, blues, greens. But, mm -hmm. you know, you'd have to give me more than one shade. Yeah, I'm too greedy for... Um, Not a chance. You, well, you just can't pick one that you love. No, and I'm the least predictable person you'll ever meet, so... That's fabulous. Um, I have one other. Charles Guy, she wants to see the painting again. Does she want to see this painting again, do you think? Or does she want to see... You know, I'm honey, 
I have to say, it is such a joy to sit here just looking at a painting. Yeah. It is a beauty. I'm going that, to was the, that was the painting. There was the cover of a book that Cave did with his niece, Erin yeah. Lee Caffill, yeah. um, called A Colored Duet. Yeah. So it was uh, my niece and I painting together, so we called ourselves The Colored Duet. And it was oh. on the cover of your book, correct? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just, and I'm the lucky one, the lucky owner of it that gets to see it every single day. It's That's unbelievable. It is, it is a beauty. <laughs> wow, this could, I should have had this up instead of my face during the entire webinar. Sorry. Um, I am very lucky to have it. Um, Brandon and Kay, humor me for one more second. I just have a couple of funny photos that I wanted to share with you. Um, about our experience, with our experience that we had. Um, if I can get it to our experience in Tucson. Um, I'm not sure. This was sort of a view here from your room. Uh, yeah, there was a fabulous... Cave, can you explain what was what, what was in front of you? Um, that was nothing. That was, that was the view out of our room. Yes. I mean, so it was like a little valley, which if you step to the edge, you would look down into this little gully. Uh, mm -hmm. that was like a, a dry waterbed. And mm -hmm. then, of course, when it rained, that became a riverbed. Um, uh, I would say that photograph was taken um, early morning. I yeah. mean, like 8 o'clock, because the sun rises. Um Right. One it goes down the other side. So you, you the rooms, all the rooms are pretty much south facing. Mm -hmm. Looking into the national park. All right. What's the next photo we have? Oh, uh, I think this was one of your favorite colored horses, wasn't it? Yeah, well, there we go. You, I, and the gray driftwood. You know the oh. the wonderful planks that it's, weathered. It's amazing how those horses blend in with the yeah. wood. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful photograph. Gorgeous. Uh, yeah. Now, people won't realize that that is about eight foot tall. Oh, no. Or 12 yeah. feet tall. I mean, really big. They're amazing. And you can see it back, further back into the hills. They just go on and on and on. It's yeah. like a pincushion of squirrels. Um, you just want to eat it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> lick it let's see oh well, do you remember this this is the fabulous cowboy cookout yeah yeah uh we enjoyed having you know fire pits and a delicious dinner and there was a real cowboy um i sort of feel like we sort of looked the part a real yeah. cowboy was singing playing music and rang the dinner bell for us all to come down to Okay, if I can't imagine. Oh, look at that. This, if you look really closely on this, and you're very at the back, leading the pack at the very back, just leading us up at the rear. If you can look in closely. Oh, yeah, but hold my hand in the air. There you go. <laughs> that would be Brandon and all of our, and some of our lovely students who joined us that week. Um, that was just a fabulous trail ride. There we go. Cruise director, that would be me. <laughs> that was our fabulous game of bingo, which I didn't know people took so seriously. But that was one of our fun events during the evening. <laughs> oh, and look at that. A fabulous pool to take your cold plunges in. Yes. And look at that sky. That was taken from the dining room. And this, oh, Brandon, what was the name of your horse? I don't know, but I, we, I learned afterwards that he was the naughtiest horse tank, <laughs> and he's known for biting and kicking. And that must have been why they put you at the back of the pack. Yeah. yeah. Well, you handled it perfectly. I didn't see any biting or kicking no, no, during no, the no. show. He was well behaved. So you are a true cowboy. I think, is that okay? I think that's it. Brandon, I had a question from one of the um, students that, that um, they wanted to see a painting that you had showed us. That was maybe, was that a, was that the horses? Yeah. yeah. Would you mind holding it up a little further? 
And so those are horses, a little closer. Those are horses, repetitive horses, correct? Yeah. They're and what did you use? Did you horses, use... On, horses on horses. What's your medium? Are you, is that acrylic? Gosh, gosh. Gosh. So and that's... They, um, they, they, they kind of like horses that interlock, like jigsaw. Yeah. Uh, you see this horse, whoops, go that way. Uh, inspired by Escher. Escher. So that horse goes into this horse, goes into that horse. Wow. Um. Yeah. And so, so wow. that, that, that might become a fabric. Might. We'll see. Don't yeah. Tell Fingers it. crossed. We hope it does. Um, I think that is it for now. We have all of our questions. Just a lot. Laura Lee Hutchinson said, just want to say thank you for changing my world from beige to color. She's reinventing herself with color. So thank you, fellows. You are the two leading in our industry, color theorists, textile artists, and I appreciate you spending the time with us. There's nothing more than we enjoy when you join us for a workshop. Um, I know you have a lot coming up in the next couple months. We're looking forward to seeing you at the Houston Quilt Festival um, in October. And you'll be with us uh, in Tucson um, in January. The dates for that are January 20th to the 24th with a fabulous welcome reception uh, that Sunday evening. Um, and then we also have a second workshop January 27th to the 31st. Um, it's a wonderful five-day workshop. Um, I, I feel like, um, you know, we had Miss Montana, or Joanne was going to join us this morning. She may already be on here. Joanne, if Joanne, if you're here on there, um, hi to you. She's joined us on Madeline Island and in Santa Fe, and a true testimonial to um, what she's experienced with you guys. Um, but again, if there's anyone on here who's taken a workshop from, uh, from the two of you, they will um, forever be indebted to your uh, time that you spent with them um, and the insight that you gave them um, and how to just um, jump in and, and be excited about color. And speaking of jumping in, bring your swimming costume. As the English <laughs> You're brilliant, Kate. I love it so much. Thank you so much for every one of the participants who took the time to join us this morning. Brandon and Kate took time out of your busy, busy afternoon. Thank you again. It's lovely seeing you every time. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the two of you soon. Take good care of yourselves. Um, and again, madelineartschool.com is our website.